Hello everyone, my name is Ryan. A lot of you know me as John Doe. So call me what you will. Now, as we know, we've had some um, pretty serious leaking uh, with the storage tanks for all the wonderful radioactive water that we've been pouring onto the melted reactors and the water's been flowing out from the underground there, it's becoming radioactive in the storage tanks. Now they got a lot of storage tanks there up to a thousand at this point. They keep building them because they have to. And we knew it was bad. But how bad? Well, 18 times higher on a radioactive level than TEPCO has ever said before. Now let's look at why this admission has had to come out. Now the dosimeters that the TEPCO has given their patrolmen, which was only a very small amount of people, that equipment only went up to uh, 100 millisieverts. That's the highest level that could go up to. So that's all these people knew. Oh, it's not a big deal. We can go in there for a few minutes, check it out, get back out, we'll be fine. Well, it turns out there's a particular reason for that, and it is because, like we said, the dosimeters, the equipment only goes up to 100 millisieverts. Now, they went back in there with proper equipment that actually can uh, detect the real level of radioactivity that people are being exposed to and the level of radioactivity of the water. What did it come out, come out to? 1,800. 100 millisieverts per hour. That's enough to kill someone within four hours, like drop dead. Four hours. Now, it's not like if they went in there for one hour, they're going to be fine. Or two hours or three hours, all right? You're in there for only a short amount of time. <laughs> You're going to get bad off. You're going to be damaged for life. Your molecular structure of your DNA is going to be mutated and permanently damaged. You're going to have problems the rest of your life, okay? But because in the past they weren't getting those proper equipment, we have no way to know how much damage the people who have been patrolling these in the past have actually been under. Now, anyone who wants to scream that us here who have been trying to expose these things or report on these things are somehow conspiracy theorists, well, this is a clear sign of all, of all the cover-up that TEPCO is engaged in to hide radioactivity levels. After this, there's no way they can continue to try to cover things up. But, as insane as they are, their drive and their ultimate controller, which is capital, that will lead them to try to cover things up even more. So, just because there are many things like this does not mean anyone should back off of them or give them any type of pass or any type of mercy. You gotta keep on. You gotta keep on, keep on with these people because they will not give up. Because they control us, but ultimately their master is capital. Capital will destroy us all, as you can see here of TEPCO. I mean, this this um, company is still hell-bent on the idea of restarting nuclear reactors. And the government is still hell-bent on trying to restart nuclear reactors, which ain't going to happen within this year, I'll tell you right now. You know, even though they got mock fuel now shipped into the country, I did a video on that in the past, we've been following that with the French company, and all these things, right? They try to restart reactors at this point. They are mad. And they are truly insane. So, what is the solution here? What can be done? Well, after TEPCO recently came out and asked for help from the international community, let's hope that the industry, international nuclear industry, that just as slimy and as dirty and will cover things up, We'll get in there 
and hopefully there'll be some decent human beings involved that will get this under control and get a better plan started. Because so far, the Japanese government has given TEPCO carte blanche to do whatever they want. And don't forget that the government nationalized TEPCO and bought them out after the after this incident started. So TEPCO and the government are the same thing. So what the Japanese government's been doing is place their own people at the heads of the company, VP, CEOs, and all that, and said, have at it, boys. Make this problem go away. We don't care how you make it go away. Just make it go away. Get it out of the public eye. Don't let people know what's going on over there. And it's clearly what's been going on. But let's look at something coming up very soon here. Very soon, the final decision for the Olympic Games, I believe, 2020 is going to be announced. And Tokyo wants that. All across Tokyo here, you see these advertisements or campaigns for it and everything. So if you want to really, really get a lot of attention to this, now is a key time. The Japanese government does not want to be embarrassed right now. They do not want this to get huge amount of international attention. But now is the time, okay? Because you know Olympics brings a lot of attention to uh, governments and nations. And it's a good time to get people to say, look, look, look. Before you make a decision on how good Tokyo is as a candidate for the Olympics, look, look, look. Now, will that really have an effect? Well, it depends on how many people get up and say something. How many people reject that idea? Because like I said, remember, those who control us are controlled by capital. And capital has no morals. Capital is blind to anything but profit and more capital. So we're going to keep that in mind. And keep in mind that now the radioactivity level of all that contaminated water is 1,800 millisieverts per hour. And it does kill a human being for four hours. Remember that point. Until next time, this is me, Ryan. Here in Tokyo, checking out.